Hi everyone, my name is Stuart J. Lowe, our guest, of course, from BMO, the BMO Mortgage Specialist, Asad Naeem, is with us as always, getting to know BMO. And of course, today, the topic is what are the requirements to get a mortgage in Calgary? Is that correct? Did I say that right? That's correct, yeah, for sure. So let's talk people through it, people who are applying for a mortgage or about to will this be the same if they're coming from a, a different province as that basic requirements canada wide uh they're general requirements that most lenders look at of course you know uh, some scenarios are more specific but these are general requirements all across canada okay well i'll leave you to it then <laughs> I'll go make a coffee and you tell us all about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds great. So, as I said, you know, they're just general. Uh, there are seven important requirements that just about every lender will look at, uh, regardless of what your scenario is. And just knowing these will help any person prepare to get a mortgage. Uh, the number one thing is proof of income. You have to have some sort of proof of income if you're going to apply for a mortgage and that income has to be current and also running towards the future as well sometimes you need just a pay stub sometimes you need uh, past years of taxes filed at least two years of those taxes filed especially if you're self-employed or if you have variable income but you have to have some sort of proof of income the second thing is employment history employment history is very important and for the most part it comes in the form of uh, employment letter either when you got hired or if your employer can give you a letter this just states that yes you are employed with an xyz employer as of xyz date and you're earning a dollar amount per hour or per year this kind of just solidifies your proof of income this is your second sort of proof for that income after that it's your down payment now a down payment is necessary and depending on the value of the home the down payment can be a minimum of 5% or it can be a maximum of 20% or it can be more if you want to put down more. It's all up to you. But a minimum of 5% is required if your home is $500,000 or less. And that's just primarily if you're buying a home for yourself. If you're buying an investment property, then it's going to be 20% regardless of what the price is. After that, it's your credit bureau. Get a copy of your credit bureau. Double check that. Know what's on your credit bureau report, what debts are being stated over there, and what your credit score is. Reason being is because any lender will check your credit bureau score and what's available on your credit bureau as in terms of debts. You want to make sure everything is up to date and there's nothing fishy or something that you don't recognize over there. If you double check it, make sure everything is up to date. If not, get in touch with TransUnion or Equifax and make sure that's updated before your lender pulls that credit bureau report for you. Next thing after that is your debts. Make sure you have your debts checked. Know which debts you have and how much of a debt you have, because this is going to be counted towards your debt to income ratio. And your debt to re income ratio is a very important ratio, which basically tells whether you get qualified or not. Your total debts, including your housing expenses and all your monthly obligations, should not be more than 44% of your income. If they are more than 44% of your income, then that is a risky zone, which most lenders will not um, entertain as well. They may, but they may have certain terms and conditions, but you want to make sure you have your debts in check. After that is your appraisal. Now, an appraisal will be necessary, especially in today's markets where house prices are fluctuating all over Canada. So make sure that the house that you are buying could be appraised. And if you have um, some sort of appraisal online search, do it. Make sure that what the person is asking or the per uh, purchase price is, is close to what the appraisal is going to be. Because if it's off, then you may have to put more money in from your own sources to meet the difference between the purchase price and the appraisal. And the last thing, and it's not applicable to all cases, it's only applicable to those cases which are putting less than 20% of a down payment, is mortgage insurance. Know what mortgage insurance is. 
know how that's going to impact your overall mortgage amount and how it's going to impact your overall monthly payments. And these are your seven basic principles or requirements to look at and know before you actually get into applying for a mortgage. And if you're okay with these and all you've checked out all these boxes, then you shouldn't have a problem applying for a mortgage at all. And that, that's just basic all across Canada. Remember somebody said, as you do the application, don't go and buy a new car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it could just make mess the figures up i did have one question on on the income uh what about bonuses so you earn so much a year but some years you may get a bonus did you take that into consideration absolutely so that comes into variable income then so what happens we look at it in two parts now we take a look at the fixed income which is basically either your hourly uh, hourly wage or your salaried wage and then if there's a bonus we need two years of history of that bonus that means we need two years of T4s or two years of your notice of assessments along with the taxes filed, the T1, in order to be taking care of that bonus. And when we do take into account that bonus, it usually is the average of the past two years. Got it. It must have been really difficult when COVID was about, or I should say the year after COVID, when people were applying for mortgages. And of course, COVID pretty well wrecked most people's income. So. Uh, did, did most of the lenders go back to the year, you know, because they need the two years? Well, say the COVID year was absolute rubbish. Would they take it from the year before then? Would they go back to like three years? Is that how you're it absolutely right. yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So what we've done is anybody who's been impacted with COVID, and COVID went from 2020, 2021, even into a little bit of 2022. If your income was impacted over there, then we can definitely look at a three-year average instead of a two-year average because we know some people were high in 2020, 2021 was shot yeah. down, 2022 went right back up. So then we take a look at a three-year average in order to account for the 2021 or that year there was a dip. Got it. Okay. So that's good then. We'll uh, pick another topic and uh, we'll have a chat again next week. We've got quite a few now stacking up on our YouTube channel where people are uh, finding them really interesting. So. Have a good week, Asad, and uh, I'll put all your contact details at the end of the video, and I'll talk to you this time next week. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Stu. Cheers, bud.